Hello grade 8 students. In this video we're going to talk about our new lesson which is about the natural barriers. So in this video we will identify the natural barriers in the human body. We will determine the signs of inflammation and also we will study about the process of phagocytosis. Natural barriers of the human body. First, we have the skin, which is the first line of defense, and it represents the natural barrier. Also, we have the eyes, or the tears, they are one of the natural barriers, and they help in the process of defense. Also, we have uh, ears, which we have the ears, the waxing in the ears, represent a line of defense, and we have what's known to stop this usage so you have to stop it because it's harmful for your ears so you have to stop this also we have the uh, mouth we have some line of defense in the mouth also at the level of the stomach and the level of the sweat sweat glands okay they have an important role in the defense in the human body so let's start first with this question the natural barriers will form the first line of defense they represent the first line of defense in the human body so the question is what would happen if these natural barriers they were broken what will happen to the body if these natural barriers were broken what will be the result and what are the consequences if the first line of defense is broken we will have infection so what is infection infection it's the invasion and the multiplication of the pathogens in the body multiplication of pathogens and other microbes and bacteria inside the body this is classified as infection so infection as i said it's the invasion and the multiplication it's for example the uh, the offense or it's the invasion of pathogens into the body it's called infection so what's the meaning of pathogen pathogen is any non-self organism it's a non-self pay attention to this so pathogen it's not given to something that belongs to my body it's given to something that doesn't belong to my body this is called a pathogen it's a non-self that infects the body and it's capable of causing a disease so a pathogen it's any non-self that doesn't belong to the my body that cause infection like the bacteria like the viruses one of these pathogens is the coronavirus covid19 nowadays so it's capable of causing diseases so this is the definition of pathogen so you have to know i repeat this pathogen is any non-self and let's underline non-self it's non-self meaning that it doesn't belong to my body it will infect the body and it can cause diseases so this is the definition of the pathogen whereas the definition of infection is the invasion and the multiplication of the pathogens inside the body for example you have to know that whenever let's say covid19 covid19 coronavirus it enters into the body so this is classified as a pathogen it's a non-self okay it's a non-self that infect the body and capable of causing a disease while infection this is for example the covid19 virus it invades my body multiplicates and causes disease so this is called infection inflammatory response what is an inflammatory response definition of inflammation inflammation is the immune response against an infection it is usually the second line of defense in our body so inflammation 
it's the immune response against infection it's the second line of defense inside our body so here inflammatory response for example and inflammatory reaction evolution of the microbial infection through a thorn so we will have the scar here okay and we have the bacterium the entry inside the blood vessels and the phagocyte will move toward them to so inflammatory response these are signs for example chemical alarm signs so here we have redness and we have a lot of problems that will appear after an inflammatory response so what are these problems what are the different phases what are the four signs of inflammation what does each sign mean and we will talk about what happens during inflammation and what are the different types of cells that are interfering in such a reaction so inflammatory response let's start first with the signs of the inflammatory response we have four signs of inflammation first sign is redness second it's heat third swelling fourth it's edema so we have four signs of inflammation number one redness it becomes red in color heat and it becomes very hot swelling or it's called edema it swells and number four it's the pain so redness heat swelling edema and the pain so swelling or edema they have the same meaning okay meaning that it swells let's talk about the first sign of inflammation the first sign of inflammation is called redness redness is due to the dilation of the blood vessels and the flow of more blood to the site of infection redness as i said is due to the dilation so the blood vessels they dilate and the flow of more blood to the site of infection so redness more blood will arrive to the site of infection to help in the process and to help in controlling this pathogen or this bacteria or this virus and this is because we have redness so more blood will move toward the site of infection and the blood vessels will dilate second sign which is the heat what is the cause of the heat the heat is usually due to the dilation of the blood vessels and the fast flow of the blood so more blood will arrive to the site of infection movement of more blood where the immune response will start will cause the feeling of heat and hot so the blood vessels will dilate and the flow of the blood cells to the site of infection will increase and will be faster and faster and this will cause the feeling of heat so fever helps to combat bacteria due to the fact that pathogens cannot survive under high temperature so fever it helps to combat bacteria because they can survive or they can't work under high temperature and they will die under high temperature sign number three it's swelling or as we call it the edema swelling is due to the flow of the immune cells across the across the capillary walls toward the site of infection so swelling it's due to the flow of the immune cells across the capillary walls toward the infection site so swelling it's due to the flow of the immune cells across the capillary walls toward the site of infection so this is what we know by swelling and this is the cause of swelling because more immune cells more for example monocyte granulocyte or maybe b lymphocyte or maybe t lymphocyte we will see later in the coming slides 
Sign number four, it's the pain. Pain is usually due to the swelling that creates a pressure on the nerve cell and the surrounding of the infection site. So pain, we have swelling. This swelling will create a pressure on the nerve cell and this will lead to the feeling of pain. Because if I do a pressure, for example, on my hand, this will lead to the pressure on my hand, the pressure on the nerve cells, and this will lead to the pain. Same as the swelling, we create a pressure on the nerve cell and the site of the infection. So this will create what's known by the pain. So till now, we have four signs of pain. The first sign is the redness. We said that redness is due to the dilation of the blood vessels and the flow of more blood to the site of infection. Number two, it's the heat. It's due to the dilation of the blood vessels and the fast flow of the blood toward the site of infection where the immune response starts. Number three, it's swelling. It's due to the flow of the immune cell across the capillary walls toward the site of infection. And number four, the pain, which is due to the swelling that creates a pressure on the nerve cells. And this will lead to the pressure and to the pain in the surrounding of the infection site. Note that the first cells to cross the capillary walls, they are the monocytes and the granulocytes. That's why monocytes and granulocytes, they have a role in phagocytosis. We call them phagocytes. So here you have to know that macrophages, monocytes and granulocytes, they have a role in phagocytosis, so they are called macrophages. So when the monocyte cross the capillary wall toward the site of infection, it becomes a macrophage, which has a role in phagocytosis. When, we, when it crosses the capillary walls, it moves toward the site of infection, it becomes a macrophage and has a role in phagocytosis. So here the tissue injury where the bacteria will enter and whenever it enters here we have phagocytes they migrate we have phagodilation and increase of my permeability and we have the role of phagocytosis where they become phagocytes or macrophages and they engulf or eat the characteristics of inflammation we have instantaneous or we have non-specific Inflammation is instantaneous. What the meaning of instantaneous? Meaning that it starts immediately. So start inflammation. It's instantaneous, meaning that it starts immediately. While the non-specific, meaning that it doesn't depend on the identity of the pathogen, meaning that it kills whatever it's non-self. So it's non-self. It doesn't depend on the identity whether it is. So it moves toward it and will kill it. So it's non specific. Here we have the signs, for example, steps of the inflammatory response, where we have a pin or a wound injury into the skin. So bacteria pass the skin. Whenever it passes through the skin, we have the damaged tissues called phag cause the phagocytes to come. Number two, the phagocytes, which are the macrophages and the granulocytes, they cross the capillary wall. Number three, the phagocytes engulf the bacteria by the process, which is phagocytosis. We're going to go to talk about this. And number four, the platelets will close the injury. If you remember the platelets, they have a role in clotting of the injury. If you remember, whenever we talk about the blood component. So here, the microphage, while ingesting the bacteria step by step, the microphage will extend forward to capture the bacteria. That the bacteria they are captured and they are trapped in the by the macrophage membrane. The bacteria which are capped, they are absorbed one by one and digested. So here the macrophage which is yellow in color, it's digesting the bacteria that are blue in color. 
phagocytosis. So phagin, meaning that eat cytose cell. So phagocytosis eating other cell. There, there is a definition for phagocytosis. It's a non-specific immune response that ensured by the phagocytes, which are granulocytes and monocytes, they are called macrophages. These cells they come near the microbe, they adhere to it, engulf it, and digest it without the identification of their nature. That's why it's called non specific immune response. The first, the macrophage comes near the bacteria, second, it adheres to it, third, ingested, digested, and so the steps of phagocytosis, you have to study these steps. The first step, the phagocytes, they approach toward the pathogen. Number two, the phagocytes, they adhere to the pathogen and they get in direct contact with it. Number three, the phagocytes engulfs, ingests and digests the pathogen. Okay? So engulf, ingest and finally digest the bacteria and these are the different steps of the post of phagocytosis so this is the macrophage which is the white wbc engulfs bacterium in the immune system so what is phagocytosis the main actors they are the phagocytes they are the monocytes they have horseshoe shaped nucleus and the granulocytes that have multi lobed nucleus they have role in phagocytosis the definition of phagocytosis this is the uh, official definition it's a non-specific immediate it occurs immediately immune response or instantaneous immune response against infection the main actors they are the phagocytes they are the monocytes and the granulo Side. So the first line of defense, the skin, provides the physical and chemical barriers. And we have the natural barriers that use inside the eyes. They have an important role in protection and performing the first line of defense in the and we have number three, the nasal secretion from the nose they are called nasal secretion they have an important role and also we have the gastric juice at the level of the stomach it has an important in forming the first line of defense so the natural barriers they represent the tears in the eyes the nasal secretions the skin the urinary system the mucus also the ciliated cells that have cilia See that's like her like structure and they can move and also we can talk about the gastric juice so these four the natural barriers the slides as revision for what we have discovered before so please guys you have to study these notes these notes are very important to study the process of phagocytosis definition the main actors the steps of phagocytosis also you have to know the different uh, uh, signs of inflammation, heat, redness, uh, swelling and edema and pain and you have to know every single step, every single sign, what are the causes of this sign. Also you have to know the process of phagocytosis, the different steps of phagocytosis, what are the steps, the uh, phagocyte approaches toward the pathogen, it gets in direct contact with it and then it finally engulf it, ingested and digested. Please study these notes and be ready for our session Okay, this week. Also you have to know the natural barriers that are the tears, the nasal secretions and the nose, the skin, also including the sweating, the urinary system where we excrete some of the waste, mucus, ciliated cells and we have the gastric juice that's present inside the stomach. So these are the natural barriers inside our body. And don't forget that cells that cross the, the capillary wall, the first cells that cross the capillary wall, they are called the monocytes and the granulocytes. 
factors there are called the phagocytes they have a role in phagocytosis okay study these notes see you then bye bye